All right, welcome back. I'm Sandra Ezen. You're still watching uh, Waze. Time to find out what exactly captured our attention in the news today. So starting with you, Temi, what did you find for us in the news? Oh, hi, Sandy. So um, I found the news about Ibadan, or your state, where I currently am. Right. And I just found it interesting. So the governor of Oyo State, Engineer Sheima Kinde, has ordered the reopening of the Shasha market in the best interest of traders. About two weeks ago, if you recall, there was mm. a clash, in, an inter-ethnic clash between Yorubas and Hausas in the market. And, you know, the market was shut down because of that. There was some bloodshed. It was really sad. But the news says that, you know, he has ordered the reopening of the market now. I was speaking with someone who stays around that side and just asked him if trade has started. And she said that she noticed that it hasn't begun yet. Maybe people are still observant, you know, people, nobody wants to be the first person to go to the market and all. Yeah. But um, I, I think that he has had a meeting with the leaders of the community from the meeting and it's open officially. And I believe that trade will start soon. I hope that we continue to, you know, promote peace you know, among one another. You know, this just reminds me about the video that we did. I saw your video in your own language <laughs> speaking about... That was on Sunday, wasn't it? Nigerians. Mother Tongue Day. On the International Mother Tongue Day. Yes, I saw yours too. Speaking <laughs> about how it should be peaceful and, and all that. So I think that's still the message. We should maintain peace where our brothers keep us. Yeah, well, I do understand uh, people being uh, skeptical to go back to the market after the violence. Sadly, it seems we've been having a lot of clashes these days, and most of them are tribal and or whatnot. Do you think reopening the markets that um, perhaps they would have some security around at least for the first couple of weeks? It seems like it, you know, at least from the news. I hear that, you know, the police are going to be working you know, to ensure that there's peace and security. The governor is also saying that, you know, there will be some lights in the market, solar panels will be installed, and there are some measures that will be put in place to ensure that, you know, everything that happens is visible and security operatives will also be working together with them. So, and the heads of communities of both, you know, the Hausa communities and the Yoruba communities have spoken to the governor and they've just pledged that they work with their people to ensure that there will be peace. So, I'm hopeful that um, this would go on. All right, I'm hopeful as well. So um, moving on to my story, um, this is actually on uh, one of the major headlines today, and I think Miriam was discussing it earlier on her show Plus Politics. Um, Niger Delta militants return and vow to destroy all infrastructure in Lagos and Abuja. And um, according to the reports, the Supreme Mbwesu Liberation Fighters complained bitterly against the federal government, noting that after accepting the amnesty pact, um, till date there has been no schools, nothing has been done, no portable water, no lights, no hospital, and access to roads for the people to enjoy. And uh, they also went, to, went on to say that the military that ought to protect um, properties has turned themselves into militaries of killing, raping, and maiming innocent individuals and rending um, the youth's jobless. And I was watching uh, the show Plus Politics earlier and uh, the guests on the show, they all seem to share, about three of them seem to share like similar opinions and emotions, which was basically um, disappointment and dissatisfaction uh, on the part of the government for not keeping to the amnesty pact. So, um, Temi, do you have anything to add to this? It's a breaking story. Yes, I, I, read, I read your story and, you know, I, I found that they were talking about how that the conditions in Niger Delta is really not good. Uh, but but I, I find that really it's sad that this is going on in a part of Nigeria that is dear to our heart as well. You know, but the the threat to come vandalize Lagos and Abuja, I think that's And they actually fair, said really. all fed, not it's all of Lagos, all federal government owned the properties. Yes, all eventually all federal go government owned properties are going to affect us. Like these properties were bought with our money, with taxpayers' money. So it's eventually going to, you know, come back to bite us, really, because it's affecting some, it's still affecting Nigeria. And so when we see it like this, we are Nigeria. Nigeria is not just a, a an abstract term. We are all Nigeria. Like my brothers over there, you know, my brothers in 
from different tribes we're all nigerians so if we take it out and we say we are angry and i understand that you know they're really angry and they're agitated about the conditions which i understand but vandalizing these properties will eventually still affect us affect our economies affect other people you know in the process of vandalizing properties there just might be bloodshed again and so i think that you know we wouldn't put off fire by putting out you know putting on another fire it, it wouldn't help two wrongs wouldn't make it right right absolutely That's you don't put out you don't put out fire by by adding um petrol to it i mean usually i would say it's time for perhaps a dialogue or something but we seem to be having a lot of dialogues lately and not have um a lot of results so perhaps another way would work but i'm strongly and here on the show we are strongly against violence there must be another way so moving on quickly to our third show um <laughs> third story and this <laughs> is um you remember big brother Ka uh katrina so she would often tell fans you know support me do whatever you want to do to show love now you must have seen the story um online trending a couple of days ago i think yesterday or there about so this young lady goes on to tattoo Kat katrina's name on her lap now sadly when the superstar that's what she feels that she is um, comes, she came out to say that, listen, girl, you don't have to do this. So it was like she didn't take it well. So she's telling the young lady and all other fans who might perhaps want to do that, that this is not the right way, that there are better ways to show love, which is um, follow her shows, do all that and not fan. And so Kelly Handsome has come out to, slant, um, to tell her that, listen, this is not how you tackle this because this girl is going to have this tattoo permanently on her. And each time she remembers it and remember your reaction to her fan love is going to be heartbreaking for her. So tell me quickly what what's your what's your take on this i think this is one story that i need to go and look at really at the moment i have no comments on it okay it's one story i need to go and look at how it has evolved i mean i um, feel that perhaps the young lady was hoping that katrina would re reward her the way bob Risky rewarded uh, the young man who tattooed his name uh, was a lady that tattooed his name on her body so um either way we'll see how it goes but um, all right, so that's all we have on um, what's in the news. See you after the break. We'll be joined by our guests. Stay right here.